What Anzac Day means to Australia, Vimy signifies to Canada. And so on Vimy Ridge, Canada wrecks her greatest war memorial, 19 years after the battle. And the king comes to unveil it, fulfilling a promise made when he was Prince of Wales. It is a promise kept in the spirit in which the king keeps his promises. And he gets quickly among the veterans of those four overseas divisions, which contributed so much to the Allied victory on the Western Front. Conspicuous in their khaki berries, 6,000 Canadian pilgrims have voyaged across the Atlantic to be present at the solemn ceremony upon their hallowed ground, gifted by France and perpetuated to Canada. And to them it must seem a strange Vimy, how different from their memories. This was Vimy Ridge in the days when German artillery swept the Canadian lines, the ruined village with its pathetic crucifix standing among the slags of broken masonry, the bleak terrain over which men marched to the attack of April the 9th, 1917, and the cross commemorating the heroism of the second division, now replaced by the magnificent monument with its two enormous pylons a hundred feet high. Before the Canadians came here, French blood had already drenched these sacred acres. So France's poignant interest in this occasion is manifold. The President of the Republic arrives, and since this is Canadian soil, is received by Canada's sovereign instead of receiving him. He too remembers the dead of his nation, fallen in this hallowed place, and together they mount the steps of the mighty plinth. And the King speaks, recalling the words of Rupert Brooke. Our English poet wrote that where he lay would be forever England that England for which he died. He spoke a parable, but here today that parable is living truth. The realization of it will, I know, bring comfort to many thousands of Canadian men and women. For this glorious monument, crowning the hill of Vimy, is now and for all time a part of Canada. Though the mortal remains of Canada's sons lie far from home, yet here where we now stand in ancient Ottawa, their immortal memory is hallowed upon soil that is as surely Canada's as any acre within her nine provinces. Then the king draws aside the veil from the morning statue of Canada. And so the ceremony ends, with the King and Monsieur Lebrun walking away to the cars. The thousands of spectators throng to the monument, ivory white against a grey sky with their memorial wreaths. Not likely will this day be forgotten, and back to the monument in succeeding years will return other thousands of Canadians, to whom Vimy will enshrine through the generations the noble traditions of a great-hearted people. <laughs>